to a special video. My name is Tambay Bakshi, and today I've got two special guests with me, two of my mentors, Timothy Duncan and Thierry Huber. So let's actually begin today with a little rundown of what we're going to be doing. Now this is actually a continuation of my previous video where we discussed what exactly Bluemix is, what exactly Watson is, uh, and how they correlate with each other, and a few more questions that my subscribers had about these two platforms. But in this video, we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence, cognitive computing, and machine learning in general. So before we begin, let's actually go through another quick intro, just in case you hadn't watched the previous video. So Timothy, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Tim. Eh? My name is Timothy Duncan, and I am a Bluemix specialist at IBM. I've been doing that role for the last two years, and essentially, I specialize in the process of helping clients or anybody who wants to use Bluemix understand how to take ideas off their brainstems and deliver them in the cloud as an application. All right, great. So Thierry, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thierry Hubert, I'm the CEO of Darwin Ecosystem, and we specialize in cognitive technologies, cognitive solutions. We basically use all this wonderful technology, detect pattern changes, what happens when it changes, mm -hmm. and we help our clients basically augment their intelligence and their business. All right, great. So let's begin with a few of the most common questions that my subscribers have asked me about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and cognitive computing. And it actually starts off with the absolute simplest question that they've sent me, which is, well, what is AI? What is artificial intelligence? And Tim, I heard you had a really good definition for intelligence in general. So would you like to um, share your thoughts on that? Yeah, so um, when I did a lot of research into this concept in general. Artificial intelligence is is a tough concept to, to, to wrestle with. There's a lot of different opinions on what that is. There's a lot of different augmentations of what that is as well. Um, so I think the, the lines of truly what the core of artificial intelligence is, it can be, um, can be tricky to define in, in a simplistic term. So I mean, if I look at what intelligence is, um, it's the process of acquiring knowledge and understanding and applying that that knowledge and understanding um, so if you put artificial in front of it to me that means um, doing that action happening anywhere outside um, of the human mind exactly that's so. a good that's a very good way of putting it mm -hmm. and I agree with it Mm -hmm. oh, because it's, it's a, <laughs> since it's a matter of opinion right <laughs> right but but this, this is interesting because when you think about what is intelligent, it's a question of perception, right? Mm -hmm. Do I believe this system is intelligent? Exactly. When I do a Google search, do I believe that the result is driven by some form of intelligence, meaning yeah. some sort of prior knowledge, prior some knowledge. for applying that knowledge in some way, shape, mm -hmm. or form? Because that's what we do, right? Mm -hmm. And is it only human intelligence that matters when we talk about artificial exactly. intelligence? Right, so, so it's about really a mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And it's really about a process where somehow you have the belief mm -hmm. that what you interact with is pretty smart. It's intelligent. It gave mm -hmm. you an answer that was reasoned. And I mm -hmm. think the word reason is important when we yeah. define artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. The concept of reasoning. Can yeah. machine reason? Mm -hmm. I think this is really, you know, the... Yeah. The one thing that makes you say, hmm, there's some reasoning behind it, must be intelligent. Exactly. But it needs to understand before it can reason. Correct. Exactly. And that's the technology. So what is understanding within a computer? Yes. What is that? Where's the knowledge at? Mm -hmm. See, that's where the opinion stuff comes from. Ah, come there you in. go. Uh, but since, I mean, mm. tying off of this, since there is uh, so much to do with opinions here and how people think of artificial intelligence, a lot, uh, a, a very popular question is, well, generally, what's the correlation? Are these, uh, are artificial intelligence, machine learning, and cognitive computing just synonyms? Uh, do they mean something different? Oh, no. Like what? They're, they're part of an ecosystem. Exactly. And so, right. what I usually like to believe in this case uh, is that we've got artificial intelligence, uh, mm -hmm. and so we've got things like cognitive computing, and in this case, cognitive 
supercomputing would mean basically actually applying artificial intelligence to uh, these computers specifically. Um, because, I mean, as Tim was saying, artificial intelligence is just intelligence done outside of the human body. Yeah. Quite literally. Uh, if we were to apply that specifically to computers and help them augment our cognitive capabilities, that would be cognitive computing. And going even further, a subsection of this technology would be machine learning. Machine learning, at least from our definition, would go under the topic of artificial intelligence and yes. machine learning. So, do, would you like to expand on that? Yeah, so let's take one step back to cognitive computing. So mm -hmm. we went from artificial intelligence, cognitive computing, to machine learning, all in the same sentence. So let's step back once. Artificial intelligence, we just defined as the act of acquiring or applying knowledge or understanding. Okay? Yes. And artificial, I think it's outside of the human brain. So if we take that one step further to cognitive computing, okay? So let's bridge that gap there. Cognitive is of or related to cognition. And cognition is the mental process of acquiring knowledge. Mm -hmm. So cognitive is actually the human way. Of, it's not artificial. It's human, right? Yeah. So cognitive computing is would be back to the computer. Well, right, but but I look at it as you put humanistic traits within. That's what Watson is. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then you compute with them. Exactly. That's right. So you actually realize that cognitive processes, human cognitive processes, recognizing images, for instance, mm -hmm. right. right? Recognizing personalities. These are things that we do instinctively yes. because we've learned. Which, by the way, mm -hmm. learning is a process, and machine learning exactly. is nothing else, right, than a mechanism that facilitates learning exactly. and persistent concept that you can then utilize and exploit, right? Mm -hmm. So let's make a little distinction. I think a lot of people have have made the, been confused between machine learning, artificial intelligence. Cognitive computing, we know cognitive right now, let's define it as, yes, it's a cognitive process that can be implemented in a machine, and it is instrumented by learning systems. Some people look at deterministic computing. So when I create a workflow, a really fancy workflow, mm -hmm. okay, yes. and I write a process, it's deterministic, meaning I've already designed mm -hmm. the way that, uh, the, the outcome. I have designed the outcome that may change based on variables, but I have designed the outcome. Exactly. I have played that. A learning system is different. Mm -hmm. A learning exactly. system says, hmm, there's something a little bit more important. A little mm -hmm. bit, there are variables that are unknown. Mm -hmm. And can I learn from the unexpected? Mm -hmm. That's a learning system. Exactly. Intelligent right? computing. Mm -hmm. That's much smarter than deterministic. Work being performed with prior knowledge. Exactly. exactly. That's Just not transposed. Right. Mm -hmm. now, give me a new variable. Let me learn. Augment my decision capabilities. Mm -hmm. That's a true intelligence system. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's it. So, about this topic, now that we've basically answered like four questions in one. <laughs> what is artificial intelligence? What is machine learning? What is cognitive computing? And how do these terms, into, like, uh, mm -hmm. how do these terms relate to each other? What are they in, in, in well, comparison? Well, well, look at it. So do, did we do it, or do we want to reiterate it? I mean, I think we have done, but let's reiterate it once we sum down. The form. learning system, right? Yes. Learning network. So exactly. that's basically the mechanics of mm -hmm. like how our brain works. It's our exactly. it's our process, right? Mm -hmm. So you have that. Mm -hmm. Then you have the cognitive mm -hmm. system, which means we are able to recognize, to learn from prior knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And apply this ability, this attribute, into a technology. And cognitive technology mm -hmm. or cognitive solutions are basically the application, mm -hmm. right? Yes. It's how you apply that cognitive, that ability, into a context. Yes. And that will transcend into artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just like that. exactly. Yep. I agree. All right, so now that we've talked about this, now another slightly more technical question uh, that a lot of my subscribers sent me uh, is actually something about a machine learning topic, which um, when summed down is actually quite simple. Uh, and it's basically, what is a genetic algorithm? It's something that's extremely popular. People uh, learn about it as basically evolutionary algorithms. Uh, and so people get really interested uh, in, in basically saying, oh, like artificial evolution. Uh, and so let's talk a little bit about that. But uh, one thing I'd like to point out here 
is while genetic algorithms would technically be classified as machine learning, mm -hmm. uh, what I usually like to do is get even more specific with genetic algorithms because genetic algorithms can be used to evolve anything. It can be used to evolve uh, cars, like to build, like there are demos online of how you can use genetic algorithms to evolve a shape of a car so it can run along, run, run along a little map correctly. Uh, and there are more demos like that, but the thing is, in order to specify it specifically to uh, things like machine learning, what I like to do is uh, use specifically the term NEAT. Uh, there's an algorithm called uh, Neuroevolution of Augmenting Topologies, NEAT, uh, which is based off of genetic algorithms and training neural networks uh, with genetic algorithms. Uh, and so that's something that I'm really interested in. And basically what that is, is it's creating basically uh, a, a, a simulated survival of the fittest scenario. Love that. Uh, and so basically what happens is let's say we've got uh, a neural network that has to evolve to take some inputs and give our, an inverse output. Like if it were to take 110, it would return 001. Mm -hmm. Basically what would happen is we would create a population of say a hundred neural networks with random weights, and so what would happen is we would feed uh, all of the feed all of them these inputs and get their outputs and mm -hmm. see how how accurate each one is to the final answer. We'll take the top say fifty percent and we'll randomly choose. Do we want to uh, take two of these random uh, creatures and do we want to cross over their genes, create a child or a few children, uh, and then pass that on to the next generation, or do we just want to take someone, mutate their genes, and pass that on to the next generation? And it'll continue, continue, continue until only the best genes are picked until we've got a neural network that's extremely accurate in taking some inputs and in giving an inverse output. So would you like to add anything to that? Well, you covered a heck of a lot right there, I'll tell you that. But I do like the words that you've used in terms of evolution and organic evolution, mm -hmm. I think is really what this is. Mm -hmm. So, so you, if you look at... at basically chaos theory models, like mm -hmm. Lord's yes. algorithm around the strange attractor and things like that, and you're looking at it, you've got a very complex closed system, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That is chaotic and you can, you can find patterns mm -hmm. in it. And then you add the component of causality mm -hmm. in all of this. Well, you brought some, some good points. One of them makes me think of, what is the existential condition Mm -hmm. of such an environment. Exactly. It's like, what actually would prompt a system like this to want to survive, to, to want to have a model where a, I would say, stronger, mm -hmm. or I would say, adaptable model would survive where one would be dismissed, exactly. right? And so when you look at this, you're, you have, you're getting closer mm -hmm. to almost, our, uh, let's call it not an artificial intelligence, let's call it right. artificial life. Exactly. The fabric exactly. of artificial, uh, artificial life. Well, mature. Yes. And artificial intelligence. Exactly. exactly. And this is where the two of them actually can converge. Remember, we are at the beginning of this science. Exactly. Yeah, and, exactly. and what do humans do best? We transpose what we know, we reassemble mm -hmm. what we are. We exactly. are the result of, of many failures and successes exactly. and survival. So we are the empirical evidence that <laughs> out of chaos and disaster, mm -hmm. something cognitive and self-sustaining can exist, exactly, right? Exactly. So why not create the same thing in technology? Exactly, exactly. And I think this is where the challenge is in all of this. What is the existential factor? What is the threat? Mm -hmm. And if you understand the threat, yes. or the situation that is not favorable, mm -hmm. can the system self-organize? Exactly. Right? Which is, again, the point of these genetic algorithms. Absolutely. Evolutionary algorithms. Absolutely. So self-correction, <laughs> auto-correction. Exactly. Can you imagine what we could do with nanotechnology with this type oh, of model? That, that would be absolutely You know, it, it's yeah. tremendous. So mm -hmm. I think we, we you know, I, I love to say this, when we, when we have imagination, when we talk about these things, I love to reference you know, like the, the engineers at Motorola who uh, grew up watching Star Trek. And they said, well, we're going to create a flip phone. <laughs> or Uhura, Uhura right? Yeah. Or Captain Picard in 1987 when he flipped the first iPad on the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> so, so here's the beauty of this. When we talk about these things today, mm -hmm. it inspires the next generation. Mm -hmm. When you look Minority Report mm -hmm. and they have all the screen with the gesture, that's what we're trying yeah. to do now. We get inspired by these visions. And, and right now today, I think it is a vision. I think there is experiments. I think it's it, it's it, it really is in its infancy. Mm -hmm. But the mere fact that we can talk and extrapolate, yeah. 
Yes. I bet you that we're going to see some wonderful things happening where we're going to talk about artificial life that is <laughs> autonomous and self-guided. I completely agree. It's going to frighten a lot of people, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Yes. But I think the key there is being, is it, it's an augmentation. Right? Yes, totally. So a lot of this, what you just said, there is a real fear of, of robots and um, taking over the world. Let's, let's be real blunt about it. You know what I mean? And I think it's important to, to point out that Watson and cognitive computing in the eyes of us three is it's an augmentation. Correct. It's not uh, mimicking humans um, exactly the way, I are, way they are. It's to build software or code that can help us um, and make a better decision. Exactly. And make, make, make a better decision. decision. Exactly. Right. Not replace the decision. It's an making. augmentation. Mm -hmm. right. Very important. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. No, but this is a really cool one there you, you spun on us. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. That's good. I don't know who the mentor is now. I think you just, you just flipped the roles. Yeah, I didn't know you were going to ask that question. Well, that's good. I love it. I love it. And that's one I'm really passionate about too. Yeah. Awesome. So am I. <laughs> uh, all right, so that was pretty much all the content we had to cover in this video today. So those are the questions my subscribers sent in. So that's going to be it for this video today. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please do make sure to leave a like down below. And if you believe this could help anybody else you know, please do consider sharing the video as well. But of course, if you have any more questions, suggestions, or feedback, you can leave them down in the comment section below. Email them to me at tajimani at gmail.com or tweet them to me at tajimani. Many. Of course, though, if you'd like to ask my mentors any of these questions, uh, <laughs> then you can actually just send them to me and I'll forward them uh, to my mentors and then they can reply back to you. Uh, and that's going to be it for this video. Of course, though, if you really like my content and you want to see more of it, please do consider subscribing to the YouTube channel as well. And that's going to be it for this video. Of course, though, I'd really like to thank my mentors for agreeing to be a part of this video. Thanks for and having sure us. Yep. Pleasure. <laughs> I'm sure you absolutely loved having them in this video as well. All right, so thank you very much for watching today. Goodbye. Bye-bye.